I know the 2023 draft hasn't even happened yet, but let's look at some way too early 2024 Dynasty rookie rankings. I'm looking at my top 15 players as it currently stands. Of course, these are going to change. There's going to be new players. Players will fall, but I'm really excited about this class as I am 23. I would say 24 is a slightly stronger class, but still keep your 23 picks. Do me a favor. Drop a like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And I want you to comment down below who's a player that will set themselves apart heading into the 2024 draft class. So guys who are, who are gonna be in their last year of college this year. Here in tier five, let's talk about Jatavion Sanders. This dude is an absolute freak. A little bit undersized for the tight end position. He's a tight end, by the way, out of Texas five-star recruit out of high school number one athlete by the way in his class in his recruiting class the number one athlete i wouldn't be surprised if this man found his way onto the bruce feldman's freak list this year but he's probably going to be playing that hybrid tight end role in the nfl good numbers last year and i think he can improve on it this year as well with quinn ewers over there in texas all right right next to him let's talk about blake quorum now look i know there are some huge blake quorum stands out there if you feel like this is too low, let me know in the comments below. Some may have him higher than me. That's okay. Here's the reality for Blake Corum, which we can't disagree on. He will be 23 years old when he's a rookie in the NFL. That is tough. I don't know how he follows up last year, that incredible performance. I just don't see how there's not a dip in production. And whether it's right or wrong, typically when a player produces well and then there's a dip in production before you know their last year before going to the nfl for whatever reason they're not valued the exact same i'm not sure sure what he'll look like after this injury and i also feel like there's a better running back in this backfield that he's going to have to compete with if they're going to start giving that running back some carries which we'll talk about here in a second i will say though from just a comp perspective i do see a lot of ray rice in blake quorum's game i do like the player i'm just just not sure how we're how we should value him in dynasty football because he will be a much older running back uh, coming into the nfl all right at number 13 a player that i thought i would be higher on and this is a player who could definitely jump in my rankings over this year but i've got xavier worthy here in tier five i was a little bit disappointed by xavier worthy not really by the film because the film looks pretty good very good route runner crisp twitchy guy can gain separation pretty easily four-star recruit. I like him and I've heard a lot of Devonta Smith comps, but I hate to be the realist. I just don't know how this translates in the NFL at his size. Six foot one, fine. That's great. Six foot one is fine, but he's 163 pounds as of today. There could be some serious limitations on where he lines up in the NFL. And in return, I kind of worry about what sort of demand he's going to have when it comes to a target share like is he going to be able to demand targets when he's maybe a limited player as far as where he can line up in the nfl at the next level so xavier worthy great recruit great separator really twitchy guy fun to watch in college i'm just a little bit concerned and you let me know if you are too about what it means for the nfl i just don't know if someone's going to draft a wide receiver that's 163 pounds anywhere near the first round all right on to tier number four we talked about Jatavion Sanders. We've talked about Xavier Worthy. Well, who is their quarterback this year? Not Arch Manning. Not yet. It will be Quinn Ewers out of Texas. Showed some flashmen, uh, some some flashes as a red shirt freshman. Let's see if he can build on that year. The higher we go into the list, the more I'm going to break down these players. But I won't say too much on Quinn just yet. Next, we have Malik Neighbors kind of did exactly what we hoped Keishon Boutte would do, right? Four-star recruit Malik Neighbors is, outperformed Keishon Boutte all year, put up 72 receptions, over 1,000 yards and three touchdowns in an offense where if you were a Keishon Boutte truther, your argument for Keishon Boutte's lack of production was that the quarterback was not consistent enough and that the offense didn't fit him, which I would agree to an extent, but Malik Neighbor is still able to put up over 70 receptions and a thousand receiving yards. So to me, he definitely outshined Keishon Boutte this last year. Let's see what he does heading into his last season. Well, most likely his last season in 
uh, with, with LSU. All right, at number 10, I have a running back that I actually think could be higher. I think you could pop this guy into tier three. These Honestly, these next two players I really, really like. Oh, they could actually be in a tier of their own, but it's too late. All right, let's talk about Will Shipley out of Clemson. Former five-star recruit out of high school. In fact, he was the number two running back recruit in the entire nation coming out. A complete all-around running back. I think he's great on the ground, but he's also a very good receiving option out of the backfield. He's also someone who you could anticipate lining up in the slot here and there at the NFL level. I see shades of Joe Mixon. I don't want to say Christian McCaffrey because it just sounds so... It's just he's not Christian McCaffrey, but like a Walmart version of Christian McCaffrey just to like be respectful to CMC. But I really, really like this player. I think in PPR formats, he could be an absolute problem. He is an all around running back. And again, I think you could make a case to move him up all the way to tier three. And the same could be said about the next running back I'm going to tell you about, which is Blake Coram's teammate. Yes, hate me all you want if you're a Blake Coram guy. But I absolutely do prefer Donovan Edwards over Quorum as an NFL prospect. So I'm going to put Donovan Edwards here right at the at the beginning of tier four. I love his versatility. Edwards, that is. I love the juice that you see on film in the open field. He is a more complete running back in my eyes than Blake Quorum is. Blake's Quorum size um, is not going to be a question, but I'm just curious what the NFL will think about him. Again, for me, it's not really the size. It's more the age of Blake Corum. So uh, when I look at Donovan Edwards, I see shades of Alvin Kamara. I've heard other people use that comp. It'd be interesting. Alvin Kamara, DeAndre Swift, Aaron Jones, Jameer Gibbs, maybe. I mean, he's like not as good as Jameer Gibbs for sure. He's not on Jameer Gibbs level, but he has some real juice. This is a really fun player to watch. I wouldn't be surprised if he jumps up a tier, um, you know, this time next year or even two. Who knows? Uh, a lot of good players in this class, for real. All right, into tier number three, one of my personal favorite players because I've been following him for quite some time. Let's talk about Braylon Allen, the absolute freak of a human being that is Braylon Allen. He is six foot one, 235 pounds. You heard that right. Six foot one, 235 pounds. This is a mammoth of a man former four-star recruit, grew up in Wisconsin, signed with Wisconsin, wants to be kind of like the next great Wisconsin running back. You know, you think of Monty Ball and Jonathan Taylor, Melvin Gordon. Most recruiting sites, when he came out of high school, by the way, I found this really interesting, had him listed at safety or linebacker. <laughs> and it makes sense because his frame is ridiculous. This is a huge human. He's going to be a junior in 2023. But as a true freshman, he was 17 and 18 years old as a true freshman. And he put up these kind of ridiculous numbers. Again, as a 17 slash 18 year old, he put up over 1,200 yards on the ground on 6.8 yards per carry and 12 rushing touchdown, rushing touchdowns. He was competing for carries uh, when he you know, came into Wisconsin as a, as a freshman, but he became the starter pretty quickly and once he did become the starter he had a two-game stint where he put up over 400 yards on the ground as well as six touchdowns yeah in two games in two games over 400 rushing yards and six touchdowns the dude is a freaking he's not something like we typically see every in there's there's maybe one of these types of players every four five six seven eight years my pro comp for him Look, it's not perfect, but I would say the closest thing to Derrick Henry we have conceivably seen since Derrick Henry. Like, that is the type of player that we're looking at with Braylon Allen. Again, these, these are more ceiling comps than floors. I haven't scouted these guys enough to give you floor comps just yet, okay? But I'm, I'm giving you the what it could be with Braylon Allen. I absolutely think he's, he can step into an offense day one and handle 20 carries. No, no doubt in my mind. He could he could handle 20 carries today in the NFL. That's the kind of player we're talking about here. All right, let's go ahead and go to number seven on my list right now, which is Brock Bowers, the best tight end prospect since Kyle Pitts. Is that crazy to say? I don't think so. Four-star recruit. Shout out to Chris Moxley 
and Campus to Canton for this information I'm about to give you guys. But a few names that Brock Bowers comps really well to athletically, if we're just looking at them as their with their athletic profile, Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, J uh, Jared Cook, Darren Waller, Evan Ingram, the list goes on and on. But this is a incredible athlete who plays a position that is consistently becoming more and more important in the NFL in your tight end premium formats. You could put you at, I mean, in tight end premium, he might be like the fourth best player in this draft. Okay, but that's because it's a very good draft. But here in non tight end premium formats, it's hard to take him over some of these other players. Also, just so we're all on the same page, I'm going to talk about some stats and analytics in this video. So when I'm talking about quarterbacks, I'm only mentioning quarterbacks who have had a minimum of 300 dropbacks in 2022. There's 93 eligible there. When I'm talking about running backs, I'm only talking about running backs with a minimum of 100 of 100 attempts. There's 168 running backs that met that last year. When I'm talking about wide receivers, minimum 55 targets. There's over 240 wide receivers who met that that mark and tight ends. I'm looking at a minimum of 35 targets, which is 69 tight ends. The reason I'm doing that is because there's so many players in college football. We just have to met, meet a criteria at some point for it to be, you know, realistic. Like there's guys who might have one catch and you know they have the highest contested catch percentage so i hope that makes sense but any numbers i'm going to talk about from here on out that is the criteria involved with these players and their analytics so check this out brock bowers in 2022 amongst tight ends again friendly reminder about the criteria i'm using here in receiving yards amongst tight ends he was first with 942 receiving touchdowns he was fifth R yards per reception he was fourth yards per route run third yards after catch he was first in the nation amongst amongst tight ends yards after ca catch per reception he was fourth he had the fourth best contested catch percentage contested catch rate 76.5 percent he caught 13 of 17 contested catches great hands really good ball skills and he had the third most first downs in college football last year amongst tight ends versatile player you see he's lined up a lot in the slot a lot out uh, in line as well. You can put this guy all over the field. This is likely a top 10 pick in the NFL draft, and he's going to be a very good player for fantasy for a long, long time. Okay, at number six, I have Travion Henderson, and this is a huge hype name. So you might be watching this video and you're saying, this is ridiculous, he should be higher. You let me know how you feel in the comments below. Former five-star recruit. He was actually the number one recruit out of high school as far as running backs go. Again, huge hype name. A lot of people know this guy. I loved his 2021 film, but he looked a little bit like a different player in 2022. I didn't see the same juice, the same passion, the same, you know, oomph on, on every run, if you will. But this guy is well loved by a lot of people. It's not my comp, but I've heard a lot of people compare him to CMC before. To be fair, he was dealing with a lot of injuries here in 2022. If you look at his numbers as a freshman, he was ridiculous, like over 1,200 rushing yards, 6.8 yards per attempt, 15 touchdowns on the ground. And he also was really, really good, like ridiculously good as a freshman through the air, 27 receptions, over 300 receiving yards and four touchdowns. So as a freshman, he put up stupid numbers and I love his film. Still an extremely talented player, despite the lackluster or disappointing year here in 2022. If he repeats that performance, I think he will fall down draft boards. But if we see that 2021 version of Henderson and he's completely healthy, this guy is so talented, he could end up being a back of the first round pick in, in the real NFL draft. So definitely a player I like. I don't want to disrespect him, but I just, I want to see a better year here in 2023, 2024, right? Okay, at number five, we're going up to tier two and I've got Amika Egbuka, who I think is getting a little bit disrespected. I mean, this is a fantastic player. I know all the hype is around Marvin Harrison and rightfully so, but this is a really, really good player. Five-star recruit. He was the number one wide receiver in the 2021 high school class. Over a thousand yards this year, nine touchdowns, really good route runner, consistent separator, really good after the catch as well, reliable hands. He has the size to play literally anywhere on the field. And I think that will translate in the NFL. If you're looking for a pro comp, think a little Michael Crabtree, Juju Smith-Schuster, Chris Godwin, and Juju, think of the young Juju that came into the NFL, who was like top five in yards after catch in his rookie or, or his sophomore season in the NFL. And when you think of Chris Godwin, I want you to think of those breakout years that he had 
with Jameis Winston, where he was like a top five to 10 receiver. I really think Amika Ibuka is being massively undervalued. And I think, I just think that there's not enough respect on his name. There's not enough talk about Amika. I, I, I want to change that. I want to be someone who changes that personally. Okay, at number four and in the same tier, we have what I would consider to be my RB1. You let me know who your RB1 is. But we call this guy Raheem. No, we call him Rocket. Rocket Sanders. Welcome, Rocket Sanders. My RB1 in the 2024 class. Four-star recruit. He is 6'2", 227. And you see all 227 pounds of this man on film combination of power burst break tackle ability and versatility this is absolutely a complete running back that uh, they have over there at arkansas they seem to kind of churn those guys out every couple years at arkansas in 2022 almost 1500 rushing yards at 6.5 yards per attempt that's the fourth best yards per attempt amongst running backs with 200 plus carries and that's the best yards per attempt amongst running backs in the SEC, except for Zach Evans. <laughs> hey, shout out to Zach Evans here in 2022. He also had 10 rushing touchdowns, 27 receptions, can quite literally do everything that you want a running back to do. This is, in my opinion, a three down workhorse running back. I feel like if you're looking for a comp, you tell me what you think. But I feel like we're looking at a little bit of Ezekiel Elliott here. I really think there's a lot of similarities in the way that they run, uh, their run style, what they can offer an NFL team. I'm thinking, you know, Ohio State Zeke version. Uh, you know, Ohio State Zeke is probably on a different level here, but let's put Ohio State Zeke tier one and let's put Raheem Sanders tier two, right? If we're looking at pro comps, I hope that makes sense. But I really like this player and I hope you guys do too. Now, let's head into tier one. I personally have three players in this tier and initially I only had two and I had one Drake May in tier two, but I think we gotta, we gotta put Drake May just in tier one, just like we have some of these other guys. What a year for Drake May. Let's look at Drake May in 2022 amongst quarterbacks. Remember that criteria that we kind of have to follow here. Passing touchdowns, he was sixth with 37. Interceptions, the 30th fewest. More importantly, I just want you to see that he threw 37 touchdowns and only threw seven interceptions. Fourth in passing yards, first in big time throws. Now, if you don't know what big time, thro big time throws are, that is a pass with excellent ball location and timing, generally th uh, thrown further down the field and or into a tighter window. This is an analytic that a lot of NFL teams are using uh, as analytics become more and more readily available. Big time throw percentage, he was second in college football. 8.4% of his throws were big time throws, which is ridiculous. Faced a ton of pressure. In fact, no quarterback in college football faced more pressure last year than Drake May. And he also had the most scrambles. So he's constantly under pressure. He's constantly scrambling out of the pocket because he doesn't have really an opportunity to stay in the pocket. Had the 17th best NFL passer rating. And according to PFF, he had the third best passing grade according to their numbers. And he ran for almost 700 yards on the ground and seven touchdowns. I mean, which is ridiculous. Player comps are almost pointless and impossible at this point. But I do see shades, shades of Justin Herbert, a little in his game, a little Joe Burrow, but more athleticism, a little Trevor Lawrence, maybe Trevor Lawrence might be the closest comp here. So I really do like Drake May, and I think he should be in this tier one. At number two, tell me who's number two, who is number one. In super flex formats, I think it's Caleb Williams. So I would put number two as Marvin Harrison Jr. You guys know Marvin Harrison Jr. Do I really need to go through it? I don't care. I'm going to anyway. Four star recruit, son of Colts legend, Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison in 2022, Marvin Harrison Jr. rather, in 2022 amongst wide receivers, he was sixth in receiving yards, fourth in receiving touchdowns, seventh in yards per route run. He only dropped 3.8% of his passes and he had the third best PFF route grade. A lot of versatility here, 13.7% in the slot, 86.3% out wide. He absolutely will play out wide in the NFL. And I don't think it's crazy to say that this is probably the best wide receiver prospect since... 
Jamar Chase, maybe. Uh, I really, really do love Marvin Harrison. I think that the hype is absolutely warranted. So at number one, as we talked about Caleb Williams. Hey, if you're in a one quarterback format, okay, then all of a sudden Marvin Harrison is your one. Raheem is your two, right? And, and so on and so forth. But let's talk about Caleb Williams, okay? Since Patrick Mahomes came into the NFL and developed into an absolute superstar, one of the best we've ever seen, if not the best quarterback we've ever laid our, laid our eyes on in our generation, I don't think there's been a single prospect out of college that you could compare to Patrick Mahomes as far as his ceiling until today. And I think that we can make that comparison with Caleb Williams. Again, I'm I'm not saying he will be Patrick Mahomes. It's more likely that he doesn't reach that bar because quite literally, we've only seen two players, three players in NFL history reach that bar. But when you watch his film, it's the off schedule throws. It's the arm strength. It's the zip. The zip when you shouldn't, you know, bad footwork is, is on, on display. It's the command of the offense. It's the improvisation. It's all there for Caleb Williams. Let's look at how he stacks up against quarterbacks in 2022. He threw the most passing touchdowns and the eighth fewest interceptions. He threw 42 touchdowns and only threw five interceptions, which is insane. Okay. Third in passing yards, fourth in big time throws. Uh, amount of pressure face. He was third. He was 20th in scrambles. Really good NFL passer uh, rating and a good PFF pass grade as well. He also rushed for 10 touchdowns. So he had 52 total touchdowns last year. Um, anything can change, but at the moment, I feel like this is the first overall pick in the draft. You could probably make a really strong case that in the last three drafts, so 2022, 2023, and 2024, at this very moment, he would be the first pick if all those players were compiled into a draft. So let me know. Those are my top 15 rankings for the 2024 class. It's way too early. Things will change, but I'd love to hear your comments down below. Tell me what you think about this video. If you enjoyed it, if you're like, hey, let's kind of focus on what we are what we got here in front of us right now with 2023, that's fine. Leave a comment down below, drop a like to show some support, and subscribe if you like Dynasty content, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Yo, what's good? Thanks well, for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos. Watch now, it. You can also subscribe. Right now. If you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm -hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com forward slash fantasyland fam.